Hello, beauts. We are back for another episode of Bar Down Beauties, presented by SodaStick.com. I'm Jesse, along with Alexis and Fred. We are so excited because we've got a lot of good stuff to talk about, mainly women's hockey. Everybody has been clamoring for us to cover this topic. We haven't been avoiding it, we promise. Um, we have just been waiting to really tee it up, get all of our listeners in line. Um, but here it goes. We'll have Allie Thunstrom of NWHL's Minnesota Whitecaps joining us in our guest segment to really dive in deep. But to, to start, Alexis, the NHL All-Star and their inclusion of the women this year. What did you think of that? I thought it was so, so cool. I mean, last year they had, you know, some of the, the women in the uh, skills competition doing stuff. Obviously, Kendall Coyne Schofield impressed everybody in the fastest skater competition. Um, but this year to have the spotlight on the three-on-three -three, uh, competition for these women was so, so cool. And and obviously, you know, the NWHL does their own All-Star Weekend, and that stage is awesome, and they have a great turnout for that. Um, but to see, obviously, this stage as well, because there's it's like a Venn diagram. You've got the NHL people, the <laughs> NWHL people, and then you've got some who watch both, right? Yes. Um, but for the people who are only NHL side, to have them on that stage in the NHL spectrum, showing to those fans, just gives the opportunity to bring more fans over to the women's right. hockey come side. Come look at it, come watch yes. us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, you mentioned last year, they started it, they dipped their toe in the yep. water, and they really elevated that this year with the 3-on-3. Three three. Not only did they elevate it with the game itself, but just the production and the excitement that they put around the women this year. I mean, introducing them like they introduced the guys. I mean, it's a little thing, but it's, important. it's not. It's yeah. a huge thing because it really kind of evens that playing field a little bit and reminds people that like, hey, these girls can play, man. I mean, they, they prove it. They are fast and they do. I think we talked about this before we started recording here on Twitter, how it lit up. Yeah. So complimentary of the way that people were played. And it's funny because so many were shocked, I think, right? Like, Oh wow, they can skate, and yeah. it was like, well, duh. I mean, yeah. they, they have you seen the Olympics? I mean, <laughs> right. it's just so funny. Have you yeah. seen an NWHL game? Um, but it is. I mean, not to make fun of that because I think that's the problem. You just yeah. don't have enough people that are out there watching the women play, and when they do, it's truly eye-opening to just be like, holy cow, wow, there is a lot of talent. I mean, you get to see it mm -hmm. every NWHL game here. I mean, how exciting was it for you to to have that interaction on Twitter and to see fans? see what you see all the time yeah I was um I don't know where I was the day that that happened but I remember coming home and my dad had it on in the living room and he was watching he's like buddy get in here my dad and I call each other buddy disclaimer I don't know if any, anyone Love who follows you, me on Twitter More knows Jim. that yeah does he usually watch women's games or is this kind of a for like uh he watches all the games because I call them so sure. he watches the Whitecaps games um and obviously like with the Olympics when it's on mm -hmm. um but uh, and this was a new thing this year the three on three so um he's like buddy come in here did you see this this is so cool I'm like yeah and uh he, we were we were watching the rest of it and stuff and um I, I went on twitter that night and my timeline was like 95 percent people talking about the three-on-three -three, uh matchup between the women um at the all-star game and so i thought it was so cool because i don't remember seeing a bad comment about it everyone was like no. this is awesome they were so fast they were so talented and i'm just like you said i'm reading through i'm like yeah yeah duh, duh. okay <laughs> welcome aboard i knew that um but people were so so happy and so excited and um Hopefully, if anything, that'll get them to come and watch more women's games, no matter what level it's at, no matter where they are in the country, um, just to get them to say, hey, that was cool. And I want to see more of that. Yeah. That's what the point of that is, is to get people's attention, even just talking about it on social media. You're right. drawing attention to it. And that's what the most important thing is. And it's getting butts in the seat. Yeah. I mean, in Minnesota, we are so spoiled, not only on the men's side, but the women's side. <laughs> yeah. You guys, we have produced so many amazingly talented female hockey players. Um, I mean, take a look at the Olympic team. Take a look at the U.S. national team. Take a look at all Humble of it. Bray. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know us Minnesotans. We love ourselves. We, love ourselves. <laughs> we certainly love ourselves. But truly, I mean, and the Whitecaps, they yeah. have been around. They are now two years into the NWHL. Um, but even before that, they had the high-end talent still continuing to do so. Um, and, and they're selling out. So it's not only that you get to watch really, really skilled players, but they're also bringing in money. Alexis, talk about having those sellout crowds mm -hmm. and the revenue bring her, the revenue that they're able to drive because of that yeah it's it's so fun to see the crowds here because it's 
a more intimate setting than those, you know, 15 to 20,000 seat rinks, you know, yeah. um, it's, it's a small intimate rink and it's so cool seeing the fan interaction, seeing how excited they get. It's hard as a broadcaster, like contain my emotions. I'm like, <laughs> my job is to sit here and call the game. You're not a part, you're not a fan. You're not in the crowd, but you're um, sweating. Yeah. Right? I, oh, yeah. I, of course I'm sweating. <laughs> um, it's, it's very exciting up there. Um, and so it's so cool to see. And last year, um, I remember at the end of the year, we, all of us, you know, who are involved in the NWHL as broadcasters and stuff, we got an email from the league with um, statistics about sales and viewership and merchandise sales, ticket sales, all of the numbers. And, you know, the league's been around for five years, so they compared it to, you know, how it's grown and, and whatnot. Um, and seeing Minnesota be the only team to turn a revenue, to turn a profit in their first year in the league was so cool to see. Obviously, I wish all of the other teams can get to that level at some point, but to know that Minnesota came in here, they were given a, a chance to be in the NWHL, and they were the only team to turn a profit that year was so exciting to see, to say, hey, people care about this league. They care about these players. They're paying money to see them, to buy their merchandise, right. um, you know, whatever that may be, tuning in to watch the broadcasts. Um, and to me, that was just, I, I remember like getting chills when I read it. I'm like, cool, I was like a part of that. I was part of the broadcast mm -hmm. that put those out there. I was, you know, someone who was advocating for that and all these women who put in the work to, to make themselves seen um, was so cool to see. So I don't know exactly all the things Minnesota does to get it out there, but they're doing it right. I'll tell you that much because people care here right and forget those naysayers that say people don't care right <laughs> yeah. I mean, again people are buying the tickets they're paying the money to come watch and and they're getting a return in some really fantastic yeah. on ice display plus you have these role models for these young girls um you know if you come to a game you see the autograph line and they kind of break down that barrier in the mm -hmm. nwhl which you don't quite get in the nhl i mean there's still certain you know behind the glass type of right. stuff whereas the nwhl players really come out and and make themselves available to their fans which is so incredibly special especially for those young girls that now have truly have the role models i mean we're not that far for, removed from when there wasn't really any anyone for young girls to look up to they mm -hmm. saw a male player maybe and that's who they and they girls can still look up to the right. male nhl players but now it's nice to really finally be like hey that's what I want to do. I want to be like an Allie Thunstrom. You know, mm -hmm. you can still be like, want to be like a Zach Parisi, mm -hmm. but a little girl can see another little girl with a blonde ponytail hanging <laughs> yeah. out the back of her helmet. Yeah. And I think that's just so incredibly special. I think because at the end of the day, you need to see it in order to want to do it. Mm -hmm. If we want this game to continue to grow, especially as it, in, as it entails to the women's side of things, yeah. those little girls need to see that it's a possibility to continue to play hockey beyond high school, beyond college, mm -hmm. and not just in the Olympics. It doesn't have to be a once every four year type of deal. Yeah. It's now this great professional league and this great professional option that allows you to continue to play the sport that you love and the sport that you've worked so darn hard yeah. on too, right? I mean, these girls are no slouches. Allie was in here. Mm -hmm. She had a long day at work <laughs> and now she's she came in with the, the big ice. hockey bag yeah. and two hockey sticks. <laughs> yeah. And now she's out on the ice because they have that same passion, that same drive and that same work, work ethic that all the NHL guys do too. And yeah. so it's just really remarkable to see. Well, and you know they I'm gonna butcher the the saying on this um but I've you know you've heard it a million times where you need to see people like you to know that to you can do what yes, they're doing yeah. whether that's race gender no right. matter a cultural thing whatever it is you need to see other people doing it to to in a way be inspired you can have the idea in the back of your head but yeah. even we've talked about it Jesse like I didn't really know that this was a possibility for a job until I saw women doing right. it. And I was like, wait right. a second. So I can do that too. Like yeah. it was always something I wanted to do, but until you see someone else do it, mm -hmm. who looks like you, sounds like you, acts like you, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it may be, then you're like, okay, so it's really a possibility that yeah. I can do this. And so that's why it's so, so, so important because it takes these things from dreams into, you know, a reality really. And, and these girls see that and they, you know, it's seeing them come to the rink and wait in line for autographs and, you know, well, it's, it's, I think it's so cute when they come with signs or they're wearing their white cap yeah. jerseys and I'm like that is so awesome I love that I love seeing that um, and the support that these women have um, is just amazing you know and uh, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Wayne Gretzky I don't Does know if you've heard I, some some guy I think he played hockey probably no. sounds um, like a hockey name sounds like a hockey <laughs> name no he was obviously at the NHL all-star game spoke with ESPN.com in their article and and he kind of nailed it he said exposure is everything um it's baby steps you're not going to flood the market overnight it takes time to get into the markets and get more youth girls to participate in hockey it's very important that there's an understanding from the National Hockey League that we want to help grow women's hockey and make girls hockey bigger and better than it's ever been. So I think the commissioner and the N NHL have done a tremendous thing by bringing these women out. And that's just it. At the end of the day, 
exposure. Mm -hmm. The more people that can watch this, the more that people talk about it. I mean, keep that conversation on Twitter going. It doesn't have to just be during the NHL yeah. All-Star game. Get out and see the high school games. The Golden Gophers, pretty <laughs> damn good, too. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're national contenders. They're national championship winners, three straight. Um, again, it's not just about the Olympics. There's so much good girls hockey here, especially in Minnesota. Get out there. That's my challenge. I'm going to bring up this challenge a second time later on in our <laughs> in our episode today. Um, I challenge you to get out there, take a picture for proof, and shoot it to us on Twitter because I think once you do, your mind will change a little bit. I mean, the more games you kind of expose yourself to, the more you start to be like, okay, this is – you won't even really tell women versus men yeah. in some in some aspects. It's all just hockey, and it's, they're all just yes. the best players in the world. Right. Really, that's what it is. And if you you know watch other leagues or other levels, you'll love the NWHL too. If you're a hockey fan, you're gonna love it. It's it's some <laughs> of the best hockey you're gonna get a they chance still to use see. ice. Believe yes. it or not, they're still skating. They're on wearing ice. skates. They got hockey <laughs> sticks. They got jerseys. The whole thing. It's not any different than anything else. And that's why when people the feedback that I get from people when they come to a game or tune into a broadcast, they're like, that was cool. I'm like, uh, yeah, hello, uh, welcome. <laughs> Anything else I can get you? Would right. you like to see another one? It's, it's it's really just, you know, it's 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 sad that people are that surprised, yeah. but it's also nice to see people enjoying it once they right. give it a chance and say, hey, this is pretty cool. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it takes time because this is only the second year the NWHL has been in Minnesota. So people are still learning who the Whitecaps are, still learning, you know, the players on the team and mm -hmm. when they play and all of that stuff. Um, and so, in a place like Minnesota, this, you know, it's only going to get bigger. We're only going to have more people coming to games and tuning into broadcasts. Um, and so it's just, it's really cool to see. And just talking about it is so important too. I know I, I love when people ask me, how are the Whitecaps doing? How did they do last yeah. weekend? You know, I, I saw that really cool goal. Did, you know, how was that? You know, I love when and people. And in case you guys didn't know, they won yeah. the whole show <laughs> last year, guys, the Isabel. Yeah. Um, it's so like yeah winners you want winners you go to the women's teams in minnesota exactly. guys. Sorry. they get it done they get it done <laughs> what can we say yeah. yeah so it's it's just keep talking about it keep posting about it come to games buy merchandise um you know buy products from the 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 places that sponsor the league all those things are important it sounds like little things you know but if you put one tweet out there and and a hundred people see it you've just exposed people to something that they might not have known before right. so it's it's little baby steps um that lead to big things and we've the league has already grown so much since it's it's um, inception and um, it's only going to get bigger so and this weekend their own all-star tournament yes. you're actually going to be out there in boston mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what people can expect can they watch on twitch again as yes. well and, yep. and follow along there yeah so last year was in nashville i was not um in nashville for that but this year i got um given the opportunity to go to boston which i'm so excited about yeah. um because um a, I've never been to Boston, so I'm very excited <laughs> to go see Boston. Um, B, I'm excited to be a part of broadcasting this because, again, this I I value my job with the league so much because I know how big of a role my job is in getting these women the attention they deserve. So to be asked to come out to Boston and and be a part of the broadcast is is so exciting for me. Um, and actually, um, by the time this this podcast episode is out, I don't know if there will be tickets left. All of the the only tickets available still are standing uh, room. Yes, so if you want to go, if you want to take a trip to Boston, or if you're a Boston <laughs> listener, I don't know what the demographics are for this. Um, but if someone out there is listening in Boston and wants to go check it out, get tickets. Um, they're not overly expensive, and you get to see some damn good hockey. Yeah. So go out there and see it. Tune in on Twitch if you can't. Um, obviously, there'll be the league and the White Caps, and myself will all be posting highlights. Um, How many White Caps? We have three. So there's Ali there. Thunstrom is yep. going. Um, um, Amanda Boulier, Jonna Curtis, and Audra Richards. Nice. <coughs> oh, and Megan Lawrence. She was just um, added um, because um, someone else was supposed to go who is now not going. So Megan Lawrence is now going. Mm -hmm. So um, a handful of Whitecaps players. Um, it's it's great. They do the skills competition. They do a four-on-four -four, uh, matchup. Um, on, so skills competitions on Saturday. Four-on-four four game is on Sunday. Uh, they got cool stuff going on all weekend. Um, they've got, if you want to skate with the All-Stars, you can sign up to do that. And again, by the time this is out, I hope there's still spots available. It's $20 to sign up. You get to skate with the players. Such a cool idea. Um, just lots of cool stuff going on. But yeah, tune in on Twitch if you can't be there. Follow along on Twitter um, because there's going to be stuff posted about it all weekend. Um, so, yeah, a really cool opportunity and some of the best talent uh, in, in the country and the world is going to be on display. So make sure you you pay attention to it. <laughs> so exciting. Games growing, more exposure, all of it good stuff. We'll have plenty more women's and girls 
mm-hmm. hockey talk coming on up um, through as these episodes continue to go, as we continue to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but before we get to our next guest, Allie Thunstrom from the Whitecaps, we want to give a shout out to our presenting sponsor, SodaStick.com. There's actually a great ticket package right now that they're working on with the Minnesota Wild to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Miracle on Ice, which is this month, believe it or not, of the 1980 Olympic gold medal. Um, the ticket package is for the February 25th game against the Columbus Blue Jackets. That package includes a meet and greet with select members from that 1980 U.S. gold medal Olympic team, your choice of a custom soda stick cap, pre-game on ice photos, a donation to the Herb Brooks Foundation, and a chance at a lot of raffle prizes. Um, the caps that you get to choose from are some limited edition 1980 hats. I believe Alexis and I actually have one of those, mm-hmm. the again, again, again <laughs> hat. Love it. Uh, we'll be sure to tweet that out and show you guys exactly what you could win. But tickets uh, for that package, upper level, 49 bucks, lower level, starting at 91 So be sure to get in on that. When we come back, Allie Thunstrom. Welcome back. We are joined now by Allie Thunstrom, North St. Paul native, 2006 Miss Hockey Award winner, and uh, Minnesota Whitecaps hero when you <laughs> helped uh, defeat the mighty Boston squad a couple weeks ago. Allie, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, happy to be here. I don't know about that word hero, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, how's that for an intro? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a very Put nice intro. Put that on your intro. business card. Exactly. <laughs> Now, Allie, uh, you were part of the Whitecaps before they joined the NWHL. It's only the second season um, that they've been in the league. Um, what did it mean for professional hockey here in Minnesota to get them into the NWHL? The only team who's not on the East Coast who's in the yeah. league right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, like you said, you know, I've been playing for the Whitecaps for, not to date myself <laughs> and make myself seem even older, but um, for almost a decade. And, you know, it was always in the back of our mind. And then when the NWHL formed five years ago, you know, of course, we wanted to be a part of it, but, you know, the logistics of us being in the Midwest didn't make the, all the most sense there. Um, and so we, you know, watched it happen and we scrimmaged against them the first couple of years and just kind of waited it out. And so to finally get to be a part of it and get to experience it, you know, actually in the league was just phenomenal and phenomenal for women's hockey altogether. Do you remember that when that announcement came and where you were and what kind of the reaction was at that time? Yeah, it was kind of crazy. Um, they sent like Jack and Winnie sent out, you know, a text message to a bunch of us and was like, hey, can you come down to Herbie's on the park um, outside of the XL at noon? And I was like, <laughs> I have a job. Like, <laughs> I work. I work. Like, what is this about? And they were kind of hush hush about it. And then so a group of us showed up and then Danny was there. And at that point, mm-hmm. it was kind of like something's, <laughs> something's happening. Gonna... Something's happening. And then when they announced it, it was just like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Like what's going to happen now? And all of the logistics that went into it, you know, I just, yeah, I don't, I didn't go back to work that day. And I was like, (laughs) you're going to have to excuse me. And everybody was pretty excited about it. So when you were growing up, who did you idolize as a hockey player? Uh, My absolute all-time favorite was Pavel Bure. I loved him (laughs) so much. Um, But then as like a female to look up to, definitely Chrissy Wendell and, you know, Winnie, of course, um, and, you know, skating with her and going to her camps as I was growing up. um, They definitely were amazing role models for us. What was the dream for you growing up? I mean, knowing, was it the Olympic squad? I know that's for a lot of females, right? You look at it and you say, where do I want to go? Or was college kind of the first dream and you knew you wanted to do that? Or both of them combined? What was that like for you? Well, at first, I grew up with two brothers, and so it it took me a long time to figure out that (laughs) there was a difference and that the NHL couldn't be something for me. And so actually, that was what I wanted to do is I wanted to play in the NHL. Um, And then when I figured out that that isn't quite how it works, then it was definitely the Olympic team and then, um, you know, college, of course, and the Whitecaps is just icing on the cake (laughs) after that. How old were you when you figured out that? Like when you're like, oh, wait, what do you mean I can't go win a Stanley Cup? What age did that (laughs) realization kind of hit? It was probably about seventh grade. It was pretty late because I'd played boys my whole life and um, it just made sense at that point. And, you know, puberty and all of that hadn't happened (laughs) where they became much bigger than me. Um, And so it still seemed like it was a reality. And then, you know, some people would say, oh, you know, you're a girl, you can't do that. And I was like, watch me, you know, (laughs) like it it never quite registered. And then when I switched over to girls hockey, the realization kind of hit that eh, maybe you need to (laughs) set different sites. Were you better than your brothers? I mean, up on them quite we, a bit. we won't tell anyone. No. <laughs> yeah. um, at first, uh, you know, that was part of like probably what helped me become the player I was is 
they didn't want their little sister playing with them at all. <laughs> and so it was like, if you're going to play, you better keep up. Yeah. And so they, they definitely helped me a lot through that. And one of them was a goalie. Oh, um, nice. So, yeah, and my older brother, Justin, he played goalie. So it was nice to shoot on him. But <laughs> uh, And then Pat was a defenseman. So we were all different, so it was hard to necessarily <laughs> compare. But if you ask them... Definitely, I wasn't, of course. But <laughs> what would your parents say? Would they be like, "No, Alice, I'm a little bit better"? <laughs> yeah, they'd just say, you know, she was a she was her own breed. I mean, there were times <laughs> where I remember um, one of my favorite camps to go to was this Andre Blue skating school, mm-hmm. and they signed me and my brothers up for it. And so I was the youngest, so my group went first, and then my older brother he was like, "I don't want to do this," so I took his spot in the <laughs> next group also. And so that's kind of probably what they'd say is, well, she definitely wanted it a lot more than they did. <laughs> sure. Um, something that uh, my broadcast partner, Kelly Schultz, and I always talk about is how, so she's a little bit older than I am, and she always says, you know, when I was a kid, girls hockey wasn't even an option. Like, I didn't mm-hmm. get to play because they didn't have girls leagues for me to play in. Um, and she always talks about how cool it is to have the NWHL and all this stuff, these opportunities for these women to play in. Um, when you were a kid, you know, did you ever think that you'd be in this position where, you know, now you're a role model to younger kids and you get to play in a league that promotes women's hockey and grows women's hockey? I mean, did, was that a possibility in your mind that you'd be in this position? Absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, no, I mean, it's it's really crazy to think about. And like I said, I didn't think that there was – I grew up in the same – kind of era where I grew up in the St. Paul area and mm-hmm. they didn't have girls hockey. So I, I played boys and then, uh, we moved, you know, across the lake basically into North St. Paul, Maplewood Oakdale. And that's when I first got my first taste of girls hockey. Um, and now to where it is today, where there's dedicated programs and there's a women's team to look up to. And it, it's just, it's really awesome to be a part of. And every chance we get to go back to a youth practice and, you know, be there in front of those girls is just really enlightening and one of the best parts about being on this team. I mean, how surreal is that, right? To see these little girls and they're just so excited to, I mean, it's almost like when you were a kid and you'd see Pavel Bure, right? You are their (laughs) Pavel Bure. (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. And I mean, it's definitely something I don't take for granted. Every um, smile that we can put on a little girl's face or a little boy's face is, it makes everything worth it. And you know, this, the fans that stay after the game and come through the autograph line, it's, it's one of the best parts of the day just to to see the effect that you can have on those kids and give them something to reach for. Yeah, with the NWHL being so new to Minnesota here, I get a lot of questions from people who are like, what's it like? You know, what's the (laughs) league like? What do they do and all that stuff? And I always talk about the autograph line. I'm like, that's one of the coolest things, in my opinion, that the league does is you get to break that divide between athlete and fan. And I don't think you always see that in in leagues, in sports. And I love that the NWHL does that. And seeing, I mean, we have to walk through it when we leave the rink. So (laughs) when I see the little kids lined up with their posters and their Mm -hmm. T-shirts, their jerseys whatever it is I just think that is so cool and um, I mean I can imagine how cool it is for you guys to to see the fans waiting for you win or loss you know whatever yeah. the game may be to, to see how excited they are to see you has got to be cool yeah it's it's incredible and um, you know it, like you said especially sometimes after an unfortunate <laughs> loss it's like you kind of forget about it yeah. because you see the smiles on their faces and just how excited they are but you know to some of like our older fans and our family members that you know we're just their nieces, you know, like sisters, whatever it is. And maybe they do follow women's hockey, maybe they don't, but they're just kind of there for us. They see that, and it's just such an enlightening moment for them, too. They're like, oh, my gosh, I had no idea that, like, people knew your name or that, (laughs) you know, people knew about your team. And so to see other people and older people that may not be necessarily, we're not role models to them, but to see the effect and to see how excited fans can get about our sport and our team is really exciting. And Minnesota fans are no slouch. They are selling this place out. I mean, (laughs) that's just so great to see. Are you surprised at all? I mean, knowing that Minnesota loves hockey, but I mean, to really have the turnout week after week and game after game that you guys do have here. I mean, how, how amazing is that? Yeah, it's incredible. We have the best fans in the country (laughs) by far. Um, You know, we're the state of hockey, so it's not surprising, but it's also there's something really special about Minnesota hockey in general in that it, it really is a community and you see it you know you see it a lot of times when tragedies happen and the group comes together but also in things like this and they want to support women's hockey they want to see it grow and support that younger generation so they're always coming out and giving full-fledged support and you know as soon as we always hear like I've never seen women's hockey and then I came to a game and now I'm hooked and mm-hmm. yeah. that's kind of what we're seeing here but Minnesota has always been very special for support and fans and we couldn't 
be where we are without them so <laughs> well talking about cool opportunities for fans and the players and the broadcasters <laughs> everyone is all-star weekend is coming up here soon in boston it was in nashville last year you guys had a great turnout for that um i'll be going as a broadcaster you'll be going as mm-hmm. as a player um you're competing in the speed skating or the mm-hmm. uh, fastest <laughs> skater competition you've got a speed skating background how excited are you to compete in that and and just to be a part of all-star weekend in general yeah i'm just super excited to be a part of it last year last weekend was an absolute Uh, blast being in Nashville and just you know getting to play with and be on the same side or same bench as people that you play against day in and day out and you know you never entirely get to know them unless you played in college and so getting that experience and getting to know everybody is you know just it's really exciting we have a really good time during the skills competition um, you know, it, it'll be a lot of fun this year too, I'm sure. I mean, you have the fastest skater in the bag, <laughs> right? It, Alexis touched on it. You have, tell us about your speed skating background for those that don't know and, and how much that's going to probably elevate you just a little <laughs> bit, maybe give you an extra advantage. Uh, we'll see. But, um, so yeah, I actually, I took up speed skating after college. Um, so, you know, I graduated and was kind of like, I don't know what to do now. You know, I played hockey my whole life and I was still playing white caps, but, you know, it wasn't a super organized league at that point. And I was just kind of like, what do I do? And a couple of people had suggested, why don't you try speed skating? And I was like, <laughs> who wants to skate in circles <laughs> without a puck? Like that does not sound fun at all. And so after a couple months, um, I tried it and I honestly, I I say this to pretty much everybody that asked me, I don't know why I stuck with it. (laughs) I was awful. Like, In what respects? Like, what made you awful, as you say? So when you get on the speed skates, it's a much longer blade. And it, it, you know, it spans out probably five inches from the toe of your skate. And so I just couldn't figure that out. And so I'd be face planning in the middle of a straightaway. And if you ever (laughs) watch speed skating... If people fall, it's some, it's usually in the corner, like right. getting really low, and there's me in the middle of the ice, just <laughs> down. And not only that, but I'm out there with like seven, eight, nine year olds, kids that are learning how to speed skate. And then there's this 24 year old, like, oh, it was, it was embarrassing. Did they and help you up, or the nine year olds at least, like, hey, so let's get you up out of the way here? Yeah, I think they kind of felt bad for me. And then, like, I think I overheard one kid say, "She's in the way." And it's just like, oh gosh. Um, but yeah, so I ended up going to a camp in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and that's kind of, I think, where it solidified, like they saw potential in me and that was just what I needed apparently to keep going. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, I was in the top 10 and it just kind of went from there and did two Olympic trials and now back at hockey and it's, it's been quite the ride. That's for sure. Well, I always say that talking about, you know, the Whitecaps players and the different talents that they possess and seeing you guys compete, you know, every home game here and away games when I get a chance to catch those as well. But I always say you're one of my favorite players to watch because of your speed. And the the NWHL is a very fast league. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of fast skaters in that league. But for some reason, you seem to have, like, another, like, level of speed. Like, just when I think you've reached your, like, max speed, I'm like, there she goes. I blinked, and now she's on the (laughs) other side of the ice. How has speed skating and that practice helped you play in a league like this that is very fast-paced? And somehow you still manage to stand (laughs) out. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's... Speed skating and hockey skating are very, very, very different. And um, is it different strides? I have to imagine yes. completely different strides, right? So if you watch some of the best speed skaters, they look like they're not moving. <laughs> like it's very low and slow strides, but they get a lot of power out of each one. So it's very efficient. And then hockey is more like quick feet and mm-hmm. agility. Um, so that was a huge change. But then it was, you know, putting more muscle in my legs and just more strength. And I guess this helped increase my speed a little bit. But, yeah, you're right. There are a ton of fast players in this league, and especially on our team. You know, yeah. John is super fast. Sid Baldwin, like top to bottom, there's a ton of speed out there. What's the fastest speed that you've ever reached or have clocked at? that you're aware of? Um, I want to say they did it at Olympic trials. They did what the miles per hour would be, and I think it was around 30 um, in a 500-meter race is around that. And the men are about 40. Yeah, Yeah. I've said on broadcasts for probably the last, like, two weeks (laughs) now, I'm like, I want Allie Thunstrom to race a car because (laughs) I think she could. I think she could outrace one. I've said it on, like, four broadcasts in a row because I am convinced that – I mean, not a 70 mile per hour car, but like, you know, 25, 30. Yeah. Like I, I think you could outrace one. I really think you could. Maybe the Flintstones. <laughs> yeah. But especially uh, some of the top male speed skaters, they hit 
pretty high <laughs> speeds. And it's crazy because when you look at them, it's a 400 meter track. So right. you kind of lose sight of how far they're actually going. And yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy to watch once you get into it. Now, you guys obviously have your own all-star um, weekend that you do, um, but some women's players have uh, been uh, brought to the NHL all-star weekend mm -hmm. um, and performed in some of those um, competitions. Then obviously the women's three-on-three -three game that happened this year, um, obviously they're being brought to a different stage and different audience than the NWHL all-star. So you're reaching two different audiences that way. How cool is that to have your own all-star weekend, but also reach another audience as well with those women. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something I've always said from day one is, you know, with the PWHPA, like they're hitting a completely different audience that we are and they're hitting different markets and different cities. And, you know, all together, more people seeing women's hockey is what we're looking for. And so to have the NHL invite players to be a part of their all-star weekend and, you know, last year with the skills competition was huge and letting, you know, select players demo it, but then actually doing a three on three to get to see them in action in a real game, I think opens a lot of eyes. And that's exactly what women's hockey needs is the more eyes on it, the better. And, you know, like the comment I made a, a little bit ago, a lot of people say, once I see it, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. hooked on it. And, yeah. There's, there's, you know, still people out there that until they see it, they're not going to believe in it. So as much attention as we can provide, the better. I was just going to say, I mean, that's it, right? Like, just come and watch a game. Come mm -hmm. and watch the Whitecaps. Watch the girls' high school games here. Watch so much of that because there is so much skill and talent. I mean, what else could, you, what else do you want to say to fans to be like, come, come check us out, guys? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's exactly it. You know, there's, there's always the initial knock is, well, do they fight? Do they hit? <laughs> And, you know, it is a, it is a physical game yeah. out there. Like, um, you know, it, it gets very physical. And But beyond that, because there isn't the huge hits and, you know, taking the body like that, there's a lot of finesse. There's a lot of skill that has to, you know, happen. And like you said, there's a ton of speed in this league. And, you know, just give it a chance and come out. And if nothing else, the environment here at TRIA is unbelievable. Yeah. It's so much fun. And, you know, we're having a ton of fun on the bench. And it's just, you know, so even if – hockey's not your thing yet, you know, come out, experience the environment, watch a game, and I think you'll you'll want to come back for another. Well, and I would almost say USA Hockey has kind of taken a page out of women's hockey by removing checking from some of the younger levels, right? They're focusing on more of the stick handling and the puck possession and the way that the women and girls have played mm -hmm. their entire time, even the NHL. You're not seeing the big blow-up hits. It's not that's not the part of the game that people are there for. You're there to watch people really move the puck up and down the ice, and it's exciting, and you guys have been doing that, and that's exactly what we see. Right, and that's, you know, that's ex it's a really good point that you made. Like, if you, you know, go poll 100 people on who their favorite NHL player is, it's the Patrick Canes, the mm -hmm. Connor McDavid's, it's, you know, those guys that have a lot of skill and do incredible things with the puck. It's not the big enforcer. I mean, they absolutely have a place on the team, and they're phenomenally talented as well. But, you know, for as much as people want to say that it's the hitting and the fighting – it's still the skill and talent that people, you know, gravitate towards. And that's exactly it. You know, this is what our youth kids are doing. And so, you know, give it a chance. It's working, right? <laughs> it's working, yeah. There's more goals that way, too. It's <laughs> yeah. so much fun. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> I even know on Twitch, um, now that we broadcast the games on Twitch, we have so many people who will come in the chat and say, like, I didn't know that women's hockey was on Twitch. Like, I've never seen a game before. This is so cool. Like, so many people are stumbling across it. And when they do, they're like, this is awesome. I want to watch more. I can't wait to see them again. And they're asking about the rules and all of that stuff. So it's so cool how excited people get when they give it a chance. Because, you know, like I said, especially with the NWHL only being here for two years, people are still realizing, wait, we have a professional women's team mm -hmm. here? And I'm like, yeah, and they're really, really good. You should come <laughs> watch them. Um, so, you know, we've talked about kind of where things were and how we got to this point. So I guess the last question we have for you is where do you see the future of women's hockey? We, in, in our lifetimes, which granted, we're all different ages here, but things have changed and grown in so many positive ways. And there's still so much more growth to happen. Where do you see things in 10, 20, 50 years from now? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been an exciting ride so far. And, you know, especially the growth that we've seen in just the last decade. Um, I'd say, you know, in the next decade, I think the NWHL will still be around uh, probably doubled in size, if not more than that. And, you know, eventually having those livable wages that everybody wants is, is going to be somewhere in that future. You know, it might not be tomorrow, might not be next year, but that is for sure on the horizon because the more support that we keep getting and that women's sports in general get, I mean, look at women's soccer and, you know, they just increase their player salaries, the WNBA, 
you know, it, it's definitely on the rise, and now women's hockey is kind of following suit. So I think the next 10 to 15 years for women's hockey is going to be nothing but upside and excitement. I'm excited to watch it. I challenge everybody listening right now to come check out a Whitecaps game, take a picture, tweet at us, <laughs> find Allie, cheer Allie on. Um, but it's a cool love to rink see. too. Like even it just is. coming out to see Tria. Like I know so many people who watch the broadcast will be like, "Is there a big window in that rink?" And we're like, <laughs> "Yes." And we're on the fifth floor of a building in the middle of downtown St. Right. Paul. Like you need to come and see this. It's so cool. No, you won't. Re- you will not regret it. And yeah. again, like Alexis and Allie both said, I know the kids. It's just so much fun. How darn excited they are to be there and to watch you guys and and meet you guys I mean because you do you break that barrier that the NHL does once in a while but they just don't have the access and they get that access with you guys and I think that's you know just remarkable and and a very important part so again Allie thank you so much I know you've got practice to get to yourself (laughs) so we'll let you get on the ice but appreciate you joining we'll have you back sometime soon thank you very much for having me thank you And we're back for our final segment. We had so much fun with the mailbag last week that we thought we would bring it back. But this is a special edition. This is the (laughs) Jim Pearson mailbag edition because Jim Pearson is awesome. Um, He sent us a great list of questions. A lot of uh, chirping at Alexis, too, which is also Fred and I's kind of personal favorite (laughs) Who's Jim Pearson? Who is is he? You know, it's it's Alexis's dad. Everybody everybody on Twitter knows a little Jim Pearson. Everybody knows Jim. Everyone knows Jim. (laughs) If you don't know Jim, we need to get to know. He'll be on. You should know Jim. He'll be on soon enough. Oh, boy. I'm I'm certain of it. Um, But no, he did. He had some really, really great great. Great, cre- <laughs> great, great questions for us. So let's dive right in. Um, the This one I personally love. Do you enjoy today's brand of hockey with less fighting, or do you miss the old-style hockey with fighting and bench-clearing bra- brawls? Alexis? He asked this question because he knows how I feel about this. I have <laughs> always said I am so sad that I probably, probably will never see a bench brawl in my life, like a true bench brawl, like – Bench clearing, everyone's on the ice, the goalies are squared up, the coaches are trying to fight fans. That's what I want to <laughs> see. And I am so sad that I probably will never see that in my lifetime. I think the closest that I've seen, which I won't even call it a bench brawl, but I don't know. I've tweeted about it a million times because hashtag Marcus Foligno fan club. If anyone remembers the game last year where the Wild played the Jets and uh, Marcus Foligno went into the Jets bench and started fighting people, um, that's probably the closest I've come to seeing a bench brawl, but it wasn't, you know. So I You're like not seeing goalies fighting goalies. You're yeah. Not seeing Patrick Wall skate no. Out and, and drop them. So uh, I like old school hockey like that. Battle for Alberta, though. Yeah, That's ba- getting yeah. heated. It's getting See? Heated. Oilers. It was, it's solid. Flames. I like it. And that was, I mean, actually, you know, there was a Minnesotan by the name of Neil Sheehy. Shout out International Falls, <laughs> who was a big enforcer back when Battle of Alberta was a thing for yeah. Calgary. Um, and that's who he was. He was just that guy. He was kind of like the Kachuk who uh, would provoke and instigate. And so there you go. Minnesota connection to the Battle of Alberta. Got to bring those in. Gotta Always. Fred's rolling his eyes. Um, <laughs> I, you know what? I like today's style. I'm I'm <gasps> so it. into I am so into old school hockey. Don't get me wrong. Like, I would love to meet all those players mm-hmm. from like years ago. I think there's just something so special about that game, and that's the game that I do love. But I love how goddamn fast today's game is. Yeah. I think that's so spectacular. I mean, it's just it moves so quick, and it's so much fun to watch. And I think it's one of those things that's what makes hockey great in person because it is so fast. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, watching on TV, it's a little bit harder to get into. A lot of my friends actually aren't <laughs> hockey people, so they're always like, "Why do you like hockey?" I'm like, "Go to a game. I can't Don't see watch the puck. Yeah, Why is the goalie not in the net? <laughs> so, because it is. It's fast. It's hard to it's hard to keep up with. Yeah. But that allows for more scoring, more electric goals. It's just it's really exciting. So there's something special about old school hockey, old time hockey. But I'm not. You know, I'm not afraid to move away from those. Oh, those now fighting. we got beef again, Jesse. Oh, you know what? This is what makes it great. We're always going to be <laughs> on the opposite sides of things, which is funny that you like the old school. And I like the 24 the year old is like, yeah, yeah. more fighting. <laughs> and I'm like, no, we don't. We don't fight. No, none of Get that. off my lawn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. but, the, but here's my thing. How come there's no checking in women's? Why, See, why, why can't they? I, I want to see them throwing bows, <laughs> flying down the ice, but trying to do that shit. It's a very check. physical game, nonetheless. I'm it's not saying of, that. I'm not saying physical. that it's not super yeah. physical, but hey, man. I appreciate both styles. I just love old school hockey so much. I think my difference, so the difference is, and again, this is coming from where I work with Minnesota hockey and USA hockey and the grassroots level of things. So USA hockey took out checking from the youth of boys of Pee Wee a couple years ago now, back almost 10 years ago, I believe. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, and 
and the reason was is because people don't aren't checking properly. There's a yeah. way to check, and then there's a way just to blow a person up, <laughs> especially at the youth level. You're not wanting to see that. I mean, yeah. you know, people get hurt, and at the NHL level, they get hurt too. If you check properly, the whole point of it is to remove possession of the puck. It's yeah. all about puck possession, which is exactly what the women do so fantastically mm-hmm. without checking. They are able to gain possession, remove the player from the puck, and that's the whole goal, and that's mm-hmm. what checking is supposed to be about. It, later on in the NHL, <laughs> it became a whole thing where, oh, we're just going to smoke someone. Out for blood, and, yeah. Yeah, and then you have got the bench clearing brawls, which, again, they're fun to see for Bring back. a little bit. But I like, you know, give me the skill. Give me the skill. Give me the bench brawls. <laughs> and well, the skill. Listening. Yeah, this is it's, it's just funny. Fred, Fred, do you have an opinion? Fred, our moderator, our dear moderator, Fred. Mm-hmm. No, I've, I've always liked the, the fighting. But I, what I appreciate about the fighting is that it's not a... Very rarely is it an angry fight. I like the a angry lot of time. Like you yeah. listen yeah. to like the mic'd up stuff yeah. where the players are actually going to fight. Go? It's more like, hey, you want to go? Yeah, the crowd's a little dead yeah. tonight. We'll go. George Ross Just is my favorite. In. There is you can YouTube this. Is when he looks, a guy asks him. He's like with. George Rock, right? The yeah. toughest, biggest dude ever. I would not want to ask him to fight. <laughs> of course, fighting, there's a there's a time and place. There's a code. If you guys yep. have not read the book, The Code, <laughs> it is fantastic. So it talks about the role of the enforcer and why it is its specific position and mm-hmm. why fighting started and yada, yada. Um, great book. But I remember there was a kid, and I say kid because he's obviously <laughs> trying to make a name for himself. He looks at George and he says, do you want to go? And they're mic'd up and George looks at him. He's like, you want to go? <laughs> and the kid's like, yeah. And he's like, all right, good luck to you. It was like two punches yeah. and this kid is down for the count. <laughs> and it's just so funny. Cause it's like they do. I mean, that is a specific role. That's yeah. a, that's a way that some players play. And there's a, there's a time and a place for it. Like you don't take a run at Wayne Gretzky back in the day right. without a repercussion. Right. Like you don't, you just don't do that. And that's again, great book, the code. Um, but I would agree. It's not out of, it, if it's out of necessity, I'm not saying take away fighting. I yeah. I love it. That is a great part of the game. It's it, there's a time Momentum and a place turner, though, right? Yeah. Like there's a time and a place for it. Um, we got to tweet th- this out because yeah. I'm curious what people think. Because I know a lot of people are on your side, mm-hmm. Jesse. Like a yeah. lot of people, like a lot of people my age are on As your you side. Should be. Yeah. yeah. But but it's also like it's getting sensitive now because yeah. you've got the older I, hockey player that. Is yeah, not has right. having and you're trouble. Like, where do you, who and do you fight? Where do you draw the line? Well, but like, I'm, I'm talking about like player safety like, too, because yeah. like punching a I was gonna someone say, in the CTE, face, CTE, got that whole it's conversation. really, yeah. really hard to like to justify keeping fighting in the game when yeah. you look at someone who's a much senior citizen hockey player that mm-hmm, doesn't mm-hmm. have it all there. I, I just think you're going to see less and less of and and rest in peace, like a Derek Bugard. You're yeah. not yeah. going to see, exactly. you know, because yeah, no offense to him, he. He wasn't a player. You know, he yeah. was literally there for one specific yep. role. And, and I you don't think see that as much that. anymore. No, no, because I don't think there is a need for it. I think everyone plays the game very smartly. I think you understand when a fight's needed, when it's not needed. We don't need to get into Kachuk Dumba for those answering type. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there are certain things. It's. I think they can play well with each other. Yeah. I think there's still, I, 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 I would be very sad if fighting was completely eliminated yeah. because that is, that's part of the history and that's in the roots of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, at the end of it, I don't miss like the all out brawls unless uh, I wouldn't mind it. I mean, once a year, maybe I don't know. <laughs> once a year, two <laughs> I lucky teams. It once a year. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think we've got time for one more question, um, which I find a very interesting one that all three of us can really um, talk about what has been the toughest part in starting our own podcast. Fred, do you want to start? Fred's like Alexis yells into the mic when she talks, and that's been a real problem. Working with these girls, she's, she's maxing out my board. <laughs> it's a thread line the whole time. I mean, because you, I mean, I don't know that we've ever talked about how this came to fruition in the first place. But yeah. Fred, this was your kind of little seed that you planted. Well, I mean, I've I've had a podcast in the past, and I didn't. At the end of the day, I didn't like what it was because it wasn't unique, and it didn't actually give any perspective on things that I thought actually. I, I gave a damn or the listeners would give a and damn. And you didn't have Alexis and I. I'm getting there. <laughs> and so I, Fred s- hates us. I sat I sat next to you at the Wild Games back in the day and I always Privileged. appreciated your <laughs> your perspective and especially the courage that you have to be, even be in the room. Um, and I thought that was very impressive and I thought it was a voice that needed to be heard and wasn't out there enough. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'd followed you for the last two seasons and I thought, you know what? I thought you could take that step i thought that that it was a podcast that yes. people would pay attention to and it was a <laughs> voice that was not heard out there for a long time and was just at the precipice of moving forward to becoming an important angle and perspective um and then you and i stumbled across 
Alexa. Miss bum, AP bum, bum. here bum. as the missing piece yeah. to actually make this podcast work. It was hilarious. We were both listening to <laughs> K-Fan that morning, driving it, and I was like, who is this? Like, not in a bad way, <laughs> yeah. but I was just kind of like, really? Why is that not me? Who is this person? And and we were looking for a co-host because I just, I wanted somebody to bounce things off yeah. of with. I, I think I could handle it on my own, but I just really wanted another female to really make it work. Plus, beauties is plural. <laughs> Need someone else. Fred and I are beauties, but not quite. Mm, uh, I'm a beast. <laughs> um, and so I had texted Fred immediately and I was like, dude, so Alexis Pearson, he's like, did you listen to K-Fan? I'm like, I listened to the Power Trip this morning. And <laughs> well, I, I put her on the guest list. That's the funny yeah, thing. She's she on was the on our guest list. We quick scrambled to try yeah, to you guys erase like her backspace, name backspace, from the backspace. guest list. <laughs> like, oh, it's going to be awkward. Uh, um, and let's be yeah. honest. No one wants to listen to another guy's voice. I mean, my voice is stupidly right. boring. Yeah. So yeah. anyways, cut your mic. Bye, <laughs> Mute. Uh, make sure you... Oh. oh. Okay. I thought you were serious. I was like, Thanks, bye. Fred. Um, no, so that's good. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off there but what's been uh, for a year from your perspective Alexis yeah. what do you think's been the kind of challenge in us doing this project I think more than anything well okay two things one just the business side of it has been not stressful but that's the hardest part because like you just got to do it once and then you're pretty much done with that side of it. I mean not done with it but those basics you got to get you know all that taken care of that's been a big not challenge but a big part of what we've had to do so far it's taken up a lot of our time the other thing I would say which we joke about a lot but our schedules obviously you guys yes. are parents I'm a 24 year old um no kids full-time you know. jobs Mm-hmm. Yeah, f- full-time jobs. Um, you know, I work nights and have days open. You guys work days and some nights. And it's just, yeah. I think, figuring out our schedules and, like, when can we fill? And then, obviously, our guest schedules, because it's like, hey, they're available this one time for 15 minutes. Like, can you, you fit this in? you don't say no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, when they're available, you jump. Yeah, it's like, like let okay. me just rearrange my whole schedule. I'll put one of my kids <laughs> up for adoption, and we'll be good to go. Like, yeah. it's just, like, yeah, I think that's been a bit of a challenge. Um but again, that's just part of the growing pains and figuring out, you know, right. what works best for us. And the reward of like how much fun it is has been so much better than any of the little hiccups we've had with like mm-hmm. scheduling and all of that Location, stuff. Location. Location. Kind of our roaming show. studio. Yeah. yeah. We're at Tria today. So yeah. that's great. Back in familiar <laughs> spaces. No, I would agree. I think schedules is probably the hardest because you do. You have three different people at doing different things. Yeah. I mean, we've all got different jobs, nine to fives, kids, no kids, whatever. Um, luckily, we're all kind of on the northeast side of things anyway <laughs> location Paul, wise we're close, that's yeah. kind of nice um and we have the ability courtesy of fred's fancy schmancy board um to do it remotely as needed so if we you know when we're in different locations we can still jump in so that's mm-hmm. been nice i think for me the hardest part is just always making sure that the content that we're putting out on our episodes is valuable and people yeah. are enjoying it like i mean this is something fun for us to do and i could just sit here and talk <laughs> hockey and if we had one listener i would still probably do it <laughs> right. but i mean knowing that we have like a solid following so far which again thank you guys so much it's so like sometimes i just have to take a step back and be like oh my gosh yeah. wow this is so cool i love that people are listening to us right now um but i want to make sure we're doing you guys justice too so i think that's kind of always the challenge for me especially if I'm, I'm the writer, right? Like right. I, in my head, I'm writing a story. So I'm always making sure that we're putting something out there that everybody would want to listen to. So to me, that's an exciting challenge, but it's a challenge mm-hmm. to make sure we're getting the guests that are appropriate there. Um, and I think that's kind of the, the thing that I would peg as the, the toughest part. Um, yeah. So awesome questions, Jim. We got lots more coming from you. So Jim Pearson it. mailbag. Jim Pearson mailbag. We'll uh, we'll get that. We'll Peggy as a sponsor <laughs> there. So uh, thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you to Allie Thunstrom for joining us as our guest. Thank you to Aaron Sickman and the Tria staff for letting us use the media room here at Tria Rink. And again, big shout out to SodaStick.com for making uh, our podcast and merchandising dreams come true. We'll be back again next week. Thanks for tuning in, Buttes. Oh.